this video, we're going to talk about the spline editor. There's actually two spline editors within DaVinci Resolve, one on the edit page and one on the fusion page. And the spline editor is basically just the mode that you use to refine your different animations. If you enjoyed today's content and you want to contribute, make sure you hit the like button to help with the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for future content. So first up is the edit page. You got some footage here from Envato Elements, which you can find a link to in the description. Just this random dude doing random shit in the rain. Anyway, uh, we're gonna set some keyframes. You click the notch on the side to set a keyframe. We're gonna go about halfway through the clip and we're gonna do a zoom. So if I automatically, that would make the video zoom in to that point. And say for instance you want to refine it, because right now it's completely linear. If you want to refine it, this is the spline editor here. Actually, these are the keyframes. You can see the two set there. You can actually you can grab one, move them around. Holding the Alt key, you can click and make a new keyframe. You can delete that. Click here, and it actually give you the spline editor. Did I actually call that? I don't think, but it's pretty much what it is. So this is the keyframe. This is the starting point, end point. You can click here, and you got different modes you can click on. They're, it's not as intuitive as the spline editor and the fusion page, but we'll get to that later. So you click on your keyframe and click one of the notches, and it will actually, see, it doesn't tell you what meets you want to, but it basically give you a handle here you can use to animate or to change the animation yourself. So if you leave it like that, you're going to give a bit of a quicker zoom in and taper off at the end and it actually zooms back out. You can actually completely manipulate the keyframes from here. So you do here, it goes up, zoom in, zoom back out. And you can move it in, keep it flat, then have a quick zoom in, zoom back out. Level this back out, make this closer, and get a quick little punch. And so it's not that intuitive compared to the one in the spine to, uh, in the, in the fusion page, I'm sorry. But it is something that's there to kind of smooth out keyframes in between different effects. You can, you can do it with pretty much either one of these uh, when you edit some or use a keyframe for something. This little arrow here, you can hit the drop down and it shows all the different effects. So if you do a cropping, pinch, or pitch and yaw, rotate angle, all those will create keyframes. You can select all, show them all there or just show the ones that's being used. So if you want to work, just narrow in on the zoom, the X and Y axis, click those, and it'll just strictly show the X and Y axis. Or you can click all, and it'll show you everything, which nothing else should be, nothing else should move because it's not keyframed or animated or anything like that. So you can just stick with your different keyframes. You also, from this page, hit, uh, hold the alt button and click again. It'll make a keyframe in the middle of your animation now we're in fusion so i created this little animation here it's basically just a background with a uh, rectangle mask on it going in and out we're gonna go into the spline editor first and foremost you want to go to the three dots here on the side of the menu button and click show only selected tools what this does is anything you have selected like this rectangle here it will only show it here within the tab otherwise well, I only have with that one node uh, right now on the page, but otherwise it will show pretty much all your nodes, which will make the will make this page here a lot more cluttered. Therefore, making it a little bit more harder to work around with. By clicking Show Only Selected Tools, it cleans this area up. So if you select the rectangle, it'll show the rectangle. If you click Background, since I have no key uh, no keyframes or animations done with the background, it shows nothing. Same thing if you click media out, but anything in between, if I had a different mask or anything like that, it will show whichever one is selected. Now this one here, you can see the animation, you can see the curve line. If you hit F4, it makes it go full screen. It basically, it just take up the whole real estate of the bottom screen. You can select this part of the screen here and move it up. You can't see anything then, but you know, just adjust it accordingly and give you more room to work. This is your zoom to fit. So you click that and it will zoom in on all your animations, I mean, all your keyframes. Also, if you're, say for instance, zoomed out, and hit Control F, it'll allow it to zoom in. Click 
click at least once within the spine area itself and you hit control A, it will select all your keyframes. You can see them selected there. Or you can click here to select all and it'll select all the keyframes within the immediate window here. So I always want to hit fit to zoom, well, zoom to fit first and then hit select all. Now here you have your toolbar. This is your smooth animation. You actually can hit S to smooth out your animations. And that keeps your animation from being so linear. Which you do have the, oh, let's go back. Select all. You do have the linear option. It'll basically just kind of give you a straight line. So you have, basically go straight back and forward. Doesn't have any kind of fluidity to it. You have the invert here. I don't know what it does. It's never come up for me to select. So I never use it. But select all. You also can click and drag across all your keyframes and select them as well. You have this step, I think this step in, yeah. Step in basically flattens out your animation. So basically you'll have something will happen, it will drop down and flatten it out and keeping that animation current or in that same state until the animation changes again. So if you look up here, instead of it gradually changing shape, it just remains stagnant. So basically it's a flat animation as you see here, Anything that's flat is still. So once you change from that state to this state, which is the drop down, it goes, it remains flat all the way to the end. So you get the frame, was it 45? And then it drops down again. And step out is the reverse of that. So you click it. And go to the animation, it stays stagnant drop down it does the same thing but it's just in reverse reverse of stepping in anyway let's see select all again this is reverse so you basically you can reverse all your animations so instead of it starting here at the beginning it starts about around frame 39 which right here is the frame counter and it just goes through the animation if it is in Select all, and so if you hit S to smooth, you see you get the curve. That's when you get your animations in. You also can grab these handles here and change the animation yourself. Or you can click on the background to unselect, and then you can click one, hit delete, and let you delete keyframes. And let's say for instance you want to loop animation, you can keyframe the animation going back and forth, or Again, hit select, uh, hit fit to zoom, select all right here is loop, and it just loops the keyframe. Well, a better alternative, at least in my opinion, is ping pong. The next one, and ping pong actually shows the animation in between each frame. So instead of it just instantly re constantly repeating the frame over and over, it will demonstrate the frame or the animation gradually go and basically create animation in between the two animations. So over time you constantly see it going up and down versus where if you hit uh, loop, it loops and then it just jumps right back up to the original state and doesn't get any animation in between and say ping pong animate in between set relative this one I'm not really sure the purpose of basically it plays out your animation then from that point once the animation ends it just does a continued downward spiral into a black abyss I guess I don't know what it does it actually makes the mask that I created on that background invert itself to alpha channel and just continues to stretch all the way through i think you can reverse that and now it's just oh that's kind of cool if you reverse it then it just does the same thing but in reverse but it keeps the animation of the mass showing and basically stretches out far past what the actual di uh, diameters of the mass i created so i guess it could serve some purpose then of course here you have to select all it's basically just fit the zoom it's going to select whatever's in the frame so if you're not 
So if all your keyframes are not in the same frame, say for instance, you move it here and you hit select, it's not gonna select anything because there's nothing there. So you hit fit to zoom. Once again, you just hit select. Oh, actually it will. So yeah, it will pick up the frames that's not on the screen. This here is actually uh, this basically just the mouse, your cursor. So you basically you can click on the timeline with a spline editor. You can create animations yourself. I mainly use this to copy animations. So let me give you an example. All right, so here we got the animation. Let me zoom in so we can actually see this. We got the animation, and I want it to actually have an ending. So right now it just animates and it goes that and just this did it just stops. And right now it animates box becomes smaller and that's it it's the animation then it loops back around from the playhead now to create an outro to create a outro animation instead of trying to replicate these keyframes or going to the end and recreating keyframes you can hit select all you select all take your mouse do a box select it's control C to copy. Then go up here, you can pick like frame, pick 165. Next you wanna do is, I'm gonna click here, hit control V, zoom out and you'll see the animations there. Select those, well, click on the background first to deselect that way the first animation, the first keyframes are not selected. Then you wanna box select the, the new keyframes you just pasted, you're gonna hit reverse. What this is gonna do is gonna create your animation, flatten your line out all the way to the next, uh, to the end of the animation, and then it's gonna reanimate the same animation. So basically, give you a closing animation. So for example, up down, and then it goes back up. Actually, it's too far. Actually, looking at it, I placed the keyframes too far out. The keyframes all the way at 200. I don't know how I got there, which is a good time to show you this. So select keyframes, you hit time stretch you just grab the node and you can actually place them where you want so I placed them too far out so there is gonna have an end at 180 that's the frame there frame there you see the keyframes and you go back and play that way that's an easy way to do like a open and close animation for particularly like graphic or anything like that hit zoom to fit and you can see all your keyframes right there We'll hit select all again and the keyframe stretcher again is a very hand, handy tool say for instance you created your animation you got it perfect but maybe it's maybe the, the time frame is too short you thought it'd be a bit longer you want to stretch it out but you don't want to recreate all your keyframes you can simply go in here select the keyframes hit timeline stretcher so right now you can actually see it's the time the little white marks here are the indicators of the keyframes so if you play the animation there's nothing here anymore. So now you see how your keyframes here. So you get the start animation and the end animation. You also got the shape box. So you click it and you select all your keyframes. It'll basically create like a mass almost. And you can use it to actually reframe or reshape your keyframes how you see fit. Now this is, I don't know what this is gonna do, but it keeps the keyframe more or less the same. But as you see here, the, the animation is gonna be all kind of wonky. So let's see what it looks like. Oh, they make it too wonky. Basically slowed it down and kind of compressed it in, but then it never actually shrunk all the way down to a box. But and last but not least, within the swine editor, you're gonna hit select all, you're gonna hit S to smooth, and you can actually grab this little arm here, stretch it out to smooth to ease in and ease out your keyframes. Actually, I'm gonna level this back out. And it changed the fluidity of the animation. If you can look at it here, actually, I'm gonna make it bigger animation of this rectangle instead of it just going straight up and down it kind of give you a gradual progression where it kind of start out slow and then speeds up that's your ease in and ease out you can do it by grabbing the key the handles on the keyframe or you can hit T on the keyboard select one of your frames and see that actually gives you the actual number what the ease in is you can Grab the number here with the mouse and bring it back and forth and change the ease in and ease out effect. 
you got any value out of this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and also hit the notification bell for future content.